so you're already describing um, to us different ways how to operate specific things such as a keyboard and our viewers have already heard about the poor principles and this is how things can be operated as one of the principles and now let's see how can we operate a computer not only with a mouse but with other different tools that other people probably need uh, to operate it. Well, actually, we are in the lucky position now that techniques has brought us really forward. And there's now so many different ways to access, for example, a computer or a high tech communication aid, even when you do not have any hand control whatsoever. Um, the Austrian firm Life Tool, for example, they produce the so called Mund Mouse, a mouth mouse. It's a type of a fairly large stick about this size um, with a mouthpiece um, and the, the mouthpiece is placed into the user's mouth um, and this person now by sucking or blowing or moving the tongue can operate anything on the screen she or he wants and there's um, a little um, almost like a, a hood you slip over the and that's put into the mouse, so actually it can be used by other persons as well. But by this description, it already del tells you that good mouth control, good oral control is absolutely necessary. So for persons with cerebral palsy, that's typically a problem. And um, so those persons would need other devices. Another possibility would be a head mouse. And um, on the picture, you see a girl with red syndrome and m many children with red syndrome were attributed with being quite severely cognitively impaired as well. And only our latest developments in techniques allowed those girls, in this case, only girls are affected um, to show their real potential. And many of these children lose the controlled hand movements. They have this almost automatized uh, ringing of the hands and they are very slow in their eye movements, but many have good head control. So what the head mouse is, it's a little reflector point on your forehead or on your nose or wherever. And um, the girl controls her head movements and a camera on top of the computer um, catches the movements of this reflector point. And then, of course, for persons with good articulation skills and enough voice potential, voice recognition would always be um, a good alternative. And also these devices have progressed um, in a very remarkable way. The earlier uh, voice recognition systems um, you needed a long time to be trained for the user and now really it catches also voices that are not completely precise. Um, then there's also a keyboard mouse which would be a very stable device where you have the um, arrows um, showing to the left, to the right, up or down and this device is big enough that those arrows could also be operated, for example, by a head stick on a headgear or with a, a stick in a person's hand. And then, of course, the possibilities of trackball or a joystick, which actually I was told by a physiotherapist would be better for any one of us because I'm sure any one of you who does a lot of riding and using a mouse Sooner or later, we get some problems with our wrists because our wrists are not made for this movements. So actually a joystick or a trackball would be a good idea for many of us. There's also the possibility to access a computer via eye gaze. As soon as a person has sufficient eyesight and um, quite precise eye movements, but you can wear glasses, um, you can have some instability in your eyesight, it still would work. You can access uh, computer systems programs with your eye gaze. And 
a young lady I had the pleasure to meet at conventions would be Katrin Lemmler. She's a German lady, I believe. She lives around Köln. And uh, she was one of the first who um, managed um, a high school leaving examination de despite her very severe disability. Katrin has a severe cerebral pal palsy of the ethetroid kind, so she doesn't have control of any of her movements and completely unintelligible speech. Um, and she was through so many communication aids. She started out with bliss symbols and then she used picture symbols, but always by using her eyesight or she used partner assisted scanning, so which would mean she had a communication board and a communication partner would ask, is it in the first row? Is it in the second row? Is it in the third row? And Katrin would signal yes or no, and then you would go through any item in this line. So very time consuming and at, time, at times just also frustrating. And you can imagine that in such a situation, it's always the speaking communication partner who controls the conversation. Uh, for her, her IGA system was really the solution. And she's just now pursuing her master studies in educational sciences. And for her also included a rather long video where she presents um, at a, a convention in Sweden called Women in Tech. And she uses her IGA system. But of course, communication should never be dependent on the existence of a plug or the existence of electricity so that, that you are able to transfer your thoughts and your opinions to others. So she al also has a communication system that does not require um, digitalization or electricity whatsoever. You just imagine a big communication board with the letters um, being separate, separate in uh, differently colored squares. So for if I were to spell my own first name, which Gonda and starts out with a G, I would first look into the upper middle blue square indicating where my first letter is in. And my next eye movement would be to the left upper left pink square, which indicates the position of the letter G within the blue square. My next letter would be O. So first I look, I would look to the right, upper right yellow square. That's where the O is placed. And then I had to do the same eye movements because the O is the very right, upper right, in the very upper right corner. So then we would have my first two letters and that's how spelling works for her and her caregivers or family or friends that are very familiar with Katrin. They do not even have to have this board present. They know um, it by heart, the placement of the letters. And it looks quite fascinating because Katrin's very quick in her eye movements and you think it's some secret language code those two have, but that's how she spells everything out when she does is not attached to her computer system.